I'm Lee Liming, and I work with the Globus team at the University of Chicago. In this video, I'll show you how to set up some basic data automation using the Globus Command Line Interface, or CLI. The Globus CLI lets you access Globus features from the command line on your computer, so you can automate frequent or repetitive tasks in Globus without having to point and click in your browser. Congratulations, you're the director of a sequencing core at your university and you just received a new DNA sequencer. You'll soon be receiving hundreds of requests from researchers around the world wanting you to sequence their samples and ship them the resulting data. Each sample will produce about a terabyte of sequence data. You've got 10 terabytes of storage in the lab, but your campus's research computing group has a few petabytes that are available at a reasonable cost. And your campus has a Globus subscription, so it's easy to get the data there and share it with the researchers who asked for it, even if they're at other universities. So, how should this work? First, you'll need to get some storage on the campus storage system and set it up for automation. You'll share access to your campus storage with the lab system so it can automatically upload the data and set sharing permissions. Next, you'll set the lab up with Globus Connect Personal, since the instrument probably runs on Windows and your lab operator will transfer the data to the campus storage and set sharing permissions for the researcher who sent the sample. Your research colleagues, wherever they may be, will receive an email from Globus when their data is ready, and they'll use Globus to transfer the data from the campus storage to their own system. But let's go back to this step. If your lab is busy and generating a lot of sequences, this uploading and sharing sounds like an awful lot of pointing and clicking for your lab operator. If it's done by hand every time, even the best operators will sometimes make mistakes. What should this really look like? As the director of the Liming Lab Sequencing Corps at the University of Chicago, I want to make things as easy as possible for my lab operators. They'll start with a set of directories on this computer containing sequence data produced by the instrument. They should be able to use a very simple command to transfer a directory to the campus research storage and share it with the researcher who sent the sample. A command like this, upload and share. All they have to do is enter the source directory containing the sequence data and the globus identity of the researcher who sent the sample. The rest is automatic. Globus will copy the data to campus storage and share the copy with the researcher. Globus will also automatically send the researcher an email letting him or her know the data is ready. My operator can now move on to the next sample. So in the rest of this video, we'll set this up. The Globus command line interface, or CLI, is pretty amazing. You can use it to do the same things you do in the web app, but using scriptable commands instead of pointing and clicking in the browser. It has a context-sensitive help interface, so you can learn about all the commands and options from the CLI itself. The Globus CLI is a Python package installable using Python's pip installer. The installation instructions and the CLI reference guide are on our website docs.globus.org slash CLI. Here's the plan. First, we'll get a directory on the campus storage with a big quota where the data from the instrument can be loaded. Then, we'll create a Surface account that will be used for the lab automation. Next, we'll create a guest collection on the campus storage and give administrator privileges on the guest collection to the lab service account. We'll install Globus Connect Personal on the lab system so we can transfer the data from it, and we'll install the Globus CLI so we can use it to automate the transfers and sharing. Finally, we'll write a script for the lab operators that in one step transfers the data from a new sample to the campus storage and shares it with the researcher who requested the scan. Okay, now let's do it. The first thing I'm going to do is create a utility account for my lab to use. I'll use the Globus ID service for this at globusid.org. This account will only be used for the lab automation 
and it will only have access to the resources needed to manage and distribute the lab's data. We won't use it for anything else. My utility account is named Sequencer. I recommend creating and using a mailing list to receive the notifications from the automation activity in case you need to check what's going on. Now that my utility account is ready, I'll log out of Globus ID. Now it's time to prepare my campus storage to receive data from the lab. I'm logged into Globus as myself because I need to authorize access to my storage. I've requested and received a few hundred terabytes of data on the campus research storage system. It's right here in the campus-wide research storage endpoint. In a folder called Liming Lab. Predictably, my graduate students are already busy using the storage. To keep the lab data separate from everything else, I'll create a new folder called Sequencer Data. To enable my automation, I'll create a guest collection. This collection will be used by the lab automation and also by the researchers who are receiving data from my lab, so I'll give it a name they can easily find. Sequencer Data from the Liming Lab. Now I'll give write permissions to the lab service account so it can transfer data here. And I'll also give the access manager role to the service account so it can add permissions for the researchers who need to get their data from us. Because I just created this folder, there's nothing in it yet, but now the lab service account has the permissions it needs just for this folder, nothing else, to upload data and assign permissions to the right people. So now that the campus storage is set up, let's get the sequencer system connected to Globus. I've already downloaded Globus Connect Personal, but I haven't set it up yet. The first time Globus Connect Personal is run, you need to create your personal endpoint. So I log in using the lab's service account and create my endpoint. I'll call it Liming Lab Sequencer. I only want the instrument data output folders to be available via Globus, so I'll need to remove the default permissions and add permissions to the instrument data folder. Notice that I'm not allowing write access to the system either. I'm going to have my operators delete the data on the instrument system manually, rather than having my script do it automatically, just in case. I've already installed Globus CLI on this computer. I can now use the Globus command to access Globus services. Globus-help displays the help information and all the commands that you can use. I can use Globus command-help to display more information about any of the commands. The first thing I need to do is log in. I'll do that with the Globus login command. This will launch a web browser. I'm going to log in as my lab service account, sequencer at globusid.org, and I'll only have access to the things that have been shared with the sequencer. I can now use Globus Who Am I to confirm that I am logged in. The Globus CLI uses UUIDs, long strings of numbers and letters, to identify endpoints. So the first thing I need to do is get the UUIDs of the endpoints I'm going to use. I'll use the Globus endpoint search command to do this. Here's the help. I'm going to use this filter scope just like I would use the tabs in the Globus web app. The filter scope My GCP Endpoints will show me the Liming Lab Sequencer endpoint. And this here is the UUID that I need when I'm using the CLI. The Shared With Me scope will show me the endpoints that are shared with me on the campus storage. And this right here is the UUID that I'll need for that endpoint. I can use Globus LS 
with an endpoint ID to show what's currently on an endpoint. This is the Globus Connect personal endpoint on my system here. And the only directory that's available on it is instrument data. That was how we configured Globus Connect personal. In that folder, there are already several sequences. Globus LS on my campus storage should show an empty directory. With the Globus CLI, starting a transfer is easy. I use Globus transfer. Specify a directory to transfer. And a destination. I also need to use the dash R because these are directories. Once the transfer request has been accepted, it gives me a task ID that I can use with the globus task wait command, which just waits until that transfer task completes. To share the directory that I just transferred with my researcher, I use the globus endpoint permission create command. Here's the help for it. And I'm going to copy and paste my destination directory from my transfer. The access rule has been created successfully. And now my researcher colleague has gotten an email notification saying that the directory is available for them to use in Globus. To show how this looks to my researcher, I'm going to open up a different web browser and log into Globus using an identity from a different institution. So this was the researcher who I shared the scan folder with. If the researcher now looks at the Shared With You tab, he sees the sequencer data from the Liming Lab collection. And if he opens it, he sees the sequence directory we transferred to the campus storage and shared with him. And all of its contents are available. The Globus team has provided a public GitHub repository with example scripts called Globus Automation Examples. Look for the Automation Examples repository in the Globus GitHub organization. The script I started with is right here, sharedata.sh. Starting with sharedata.sh, I've created a customized version for use in my lab that has the endpoints and paths pre-configured, so all the operator has to do is specify a sequence directory and a researcher's identity to share it with. That's my upload and share script. At the top of the script, I define the source and destination endpoint UUIDs, which will always be the same for my lab. I also define the directory where all my scans appear on the lab system. The next part of the script is the help text. Then there's some code for getting the operator's input parameters. Finally, here are the Globus commands we just used by hand. First, we create a new directory on the campus storage. Then, we share that directory with the researcher who sent the sample. Then, we submit the transfer request to move the data from the lab system to the shared directory on the campus storage. That's it. Since it's so easy, let's go ahead and do another one. safely transferred and shared. Now I can start freeing up the space on my lab's hard drive. We've automated this repetitive task using the Globus CLI, saving our operator a lot of pointing and clicking. You can use the CLI for your own repetitive tasks, taking full advantage of reliable and secure data transfers provided by Globus.